For many centuries the church filled the world with devils, with malicious spirits that caused storm and tempest, disease, accident and death, that filled the night with visions of despair, with prophecies that drove the dreamers mad. These devils assumed a thousand forms, countless disguises in their efforts to capture souls and destroy the church. They deceived sometimes the wisest and the best, made priests forget their vows. They melted virtuous snow in passion's fire, and in cunning ways entrapped and smirched the innocent and good. These devils gave witches and wizards their supernatural powers and told them the secrets of the future. Millions of men and women were destroyed because they had sold themselves to the devil. At that time, Christians really believed the New Testament. They knew it was the inspired word of God. And so believing, so knowing, as they thought, they became insane. No man has genius enough to describe the agonies that have been inflicted on innocent men and women because of this absurd belief. How it darkened the mind, hardened the heart, and poisoned life. It made the universe a madhouse presided over by an insane God. Think, why would a merciful God allow his children to be the victims of devils? Why would a decent God allow his worshippers to believe in devils? And by reason of that belief to persecute, torture, and burn their fellow men? Christians did not ask these questions. They believed the Bible. They had confidence in the words of Christ. It is impossible for any man who believes in the inspiration of the Bible to explain away the devil. If the Bible is true, the devil exists. There is no escape from this. If the devil does not exist, the Bible is not true. There is no escape from this. I admit that the devil of the Bible is an impossible contradiction, an impossible being. This devil is the enemy of God, and God is his. Now why should this devil, in another world, torment sinners who are his friends, to please God, his enemy? If the devil is a personification, so is hell, and the lake of fire, and brimstone. All these horrors fade into allegories, into ignorant lies. Any clergyman who can read the Bible and then say that devils are personifications of evil is himself a personification of stupidity or hypocrisy. Number six. Does any intelligent man now whose brain has not been deformed by superstition, believe in the existence of the devil? What evidence have we that he exists? Where does this devil live? What does he do for a livelihood? What does he eat? If he does not eat, he cannot think. He cannot think without the expenditure of force. He cannot create force, he must borrow it, that is to say, he must eat. How does he move from place to place? Does he walk or does he fly? Or has he invented some machine? What object has he in life? What idea of success? This devil, according to the Bible, knows that he is to be defeated, knows that the end is absolute and eternal failure knows that every step he takes leads to the infinite catastrophe. Why does he act as he does?